It's presidential <laughs> candidate Tom Steyer. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. President. Thank I'm you, used how to. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like that. I, I miss our road shows together. Our impeach uh, impeach dot com road shows. Need Come to back out. Yeah, we did town halls, right? I mean, yes. Ah, uh, so uh, fun. Thank you. I'm going right to your first tweet this morning, Tom. I'm calling on Speaker Pelosi to cancel the upcoming six-week House recess. We're running out of time to hold Donald Trump accountable. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with you. I, I just I thought I was going crazy with some of the punditry yesterday. I, I mean, <laughs> is what you saw and heard not the most damning thing you've ever heard about a president in our history? It was on TV. He obstructed justice. That's why Jerry Nadler said he... There's substantial evidence that he committed high crimes and misdemeanors, yeah. which is the constitutional language that takes you to impeachment. Yeah. I, I mean, and I know people say, oh, well, it's the summer. We should wait till fall. People are paying attention. This is what do people not understand about the word crisis, constitutional or otherwise? Well, I, really, the question here is pacing. I mean, we had the Michael Cohen hearing back four or five months ago. Then we have this hearing and then Congress is out for a month and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really, there's this question about how do you build sustained awareness? You bring it up to a peak, you have a one day hearing and then you're gone for a month and a half. How do you let people stay involved and not forget what just happened? Yeah. And I can tell you from my experience, if they take a recess, all they're going to hear in their home districts is impeachment. So why not just do it? Right? Well, you know, the other thing that we've seen is obviously there was an impeachment vote and there was the highest vote ever 95 yeah yeah so it's it's been something where there's been continuing momentum the question is how are we going to shorten the time frame so that there can be a sustained awareness let's listen to speaker pelosi yesterday did it change whether or not you think the house of representatives should launch impeachment proceedings my position has always been uh that whatever decision we made in that regard would have to be done with our strongest possible hand, and we still have some outstanding matters in the courts. It's about the Congress, the Constitution, and the courts. And we are fighting the president on, uh, in the courts. So the reporting, though, Tom, is that, and Jackie Spear, who she's very, who you know very well, who yeah. you know, represents up in your area, um, said last night on TV that after the Democratic meeting after yesterday, she said Pelosi is warming. As she told her her members to, you know, to uh, you know, vote what how they, what they feel about impeachment. So that that is definitely movement. And then mm -hmm. you know, Lawrence O'Donnell commented to her. It sounds like she is, you know, that there is movement. And she said, yes, there is. And a lot of Democrats were reporting that after the meeting. So I mean, to me, Tom, now is the time with our all of our voices to call our representatives to call Pelosi to and look at Puerto Rico. Well, I, I'm. I'm, well, here's the part where I ask you for money, which is this is a little earlier than usual, but we got to take to the streets like Puerto Rico. We got to, you know, it's like it, it, invisible. Uh, move on. Women's March. Need to impeach. Let's do a, a huge impeachment march. Look, I think that the underlying statement here is that actually the people have got to take back the democracy. Yes. I don't think there's any question that the government in D.C. has gotten too separated from Americans. Right. That in fact, what we want is not what's happening across the board. And yeah. I think that the pace of this I impeachment proceeding has been at a much slower pace than we've been calling for. Yeah. That's why we called on Speaker Pelosi to cancel the vacate the six yeah. week vacation. And it's really an attempt to say to Americans, that's why we did an, an impeachment petition with over 8 million people to say, listen to the voices of Americans. You don't have to listen to us, but listen to your constituents for goodness sake. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you've said it. You were all over Twitter. You said, Speaker Pelosi, we waited long enough. This can't wait six more weeks. I mean, we see the damage Donald Trump can do in half a day, half in an hour. We've seen the damage he can do. I mean, you pointed out one one more uh, one more thing about in terms of the damage he is currently doing. How much more evidence do we need? You said that Mr. Trump's rhetoric leads directly to violence. His words are making us all unsafe. Mm -hmm. um, the bomber just the other day was convicted. Uh, trying to bomb all of Trump's targets. I mean, it's, it's, you know. I also think there is something going on here, Stephanie, that has precedent going forward. And that's this. If you have a society that doesn't enforce rules and laws, then in effect, yeah. those rules and laws don't exist and you have a different society. Yeah. And when you go to the most powerful person in the whole country and don't hold him to account and don't make it clear that he is subject to the laws, Everybody draws the inference that the laws don't actually work. That's that right. They're, they're, 
they're imposed on people arbitrarily. They're imposed on people without political power. But if you really have juice, yeah. like Mr. Trump, then you're above the law. That is not a conclusion that any American should ever yeah. be be drawing. This isn't Jeff even, po- right even politics anymore. This is right and wrong. This is absolutely our democracy hanging in the balance. I mean, and all the yes, I want to just play Chris Ray because not only did he say, also Russia is in, is still interfering and we're not doing anything about it. Yesterday, Mitch McConnell votes down or excuse me, blocks yet the latest bill on trying to do something about it. And then to your tweet, uh, he's talking about this. And I will say that a uh, majority of the um, domestic terrorism uh, cases that we've investigated uh, are motivated by some version of what you might call white supremacist violence. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, it, it, talking about a national security crisis, whether it is allowing to Russia to continue to attack our country, and it is an attack on our country. It is, a, as people have said, like a cyber 9-11, mm-hmm. and it is ongoing. And he is inciting white supremacist violence, which is at record levels. But I think the other thing that's going on here that people don't comment on enough, Stephanie, and it kind of gets dismissed, is how much the Republicans as a group are in the bag to this president. Yeah. It's incredible. That was you that, know, that, they will that was put disgusting up with yesterday. Anything at this point, they will put up with Russian in, yeah. interference yeah. in American elections. That's incredible. They will put up with lawlessness from the White House. Yeah. They will attack Robert Mueller's integrity, yeah. who is a Republican, yeah. who is a you know career public servant in every way, simply for political purposes. They yeah. have gone in the tank. Yep. In a way that I don't think any of us could have imagined. He is a part. He's made them a party of traitors, Tom. And it is, uh, as you tweeted, you said we are in a transformational time in history. We must decide who we are and fight for democracy right now. The resistance starts at home. If there's anything I know for sure, never ever bet against the power of the people. And again, you can point to Puerto Rico. You can point to a lot of things. But you've been saying this for a while. We've got to mobilize. We've got to call. We've got to march. We've got to make our voices heard. I'm hoping in the polling. What do you think? I mean, I, I I can't imagine how yesterday didn't move the needle. We're already up to 76% of Democrats wanted impeachment before yesterday. Look, I think the, the question for the American people is literally what you're calling on, which is involvement and participation. You know, there's an old saying, democracy is, is not a spectator sport. Yep. Amer- the, the best thing about Mr. Trump is that he's so awful that he puts the onus on every American to get off the couch and participate, whether it's to protest or to vote or to call their congressperson, because basically we can't let this continue. Yeah. And Tom, the biggest danger is not impeaching and depressing our turnout. because, And I already hear it, and I try to buck people up all the time on the phones and on my email that are like, oh, I just, I'm... I'm just I'm you know in despair I'm exhausted I'm that's exactly what they want they want to wear us down and have us you know think our vote's not going to matter and it's and we just we cannot slow walk into this election this time um here's Elijah Cummings with the call yesterday and I'm begging I'm begging the American people to pay attention to what is going on because if you want to have a democracy intact for your children and your children's children and generations yet unborn, we have got to guard this moment. This- yeah, um, and I've met your children, and they're delightful, um, <laughs> as is your wife. But you said it again on Twitter. You said Mueller's report was an impeachment referral, period. I mean, because he's not, you know, he's not going to be a Fox News pundit. He's not going to be screaming impeachment. He went out of his way to not seem political, but clearly that is the remedy other than if you can't indict a sitting president, that is the remedy. But I think the other thing that it's, that Stephanie, that it's hard sometimes for people to remember is democracy is like an idea. Yeah. It's an ideal. And it isn't directly connected with the things your family needs today in terms of services like health care and education and yeah. support for living wages. But it's really important to remember that this lawless, corrupt president in his policies, yeah. also attacks the basic security of Americans across the board. Yeah. He's the guy who kept trying to get rid of health care for tens of millions of Americans, yeah. tried three t- times and came within one vote of doing it. He's the guy who tries to cut education across the board. He's the guy who attacks 
the rights of working people to organize, to stand up for themselves, and to get a living wage. So yes, he's corrupt. Yes, he's a criminal. But in addition, he's someone who actually attacks the interests of working Americans every single day. Well, and more importantly, as you, you summed it up again in a, in a tweet, Donald Trump thinks he's king. Congress has essentially proved him right by failing in their oversight duties. We're in a constitutional crisis, and simply voting Trump out in 2020 won't fix it. We need serious structural reform to our government. So I, I want to get to your, well, you're going to do the happy hour, too, so we're going to be able to get more, you know, raunchy and personal stuff, you know, like we do on the road. <laughs> but I want to know why you, we're going to, when we come back now, we're going to talk to you about why you changed your mind about running for president. Okay. And I know when we were on the road, you had your the five rights that you believe Americans have, yeah. and those are fantastic. I want to talk to you about that and your change of heart and all that. So 17 minutes after the hour, Tom Steyer's here, everybody. Yeah, presidential Woo-hoo. candidate. <laughs>